Today we've got Jog for now. We've got Morocco. I know a little bit about Morocco, but not too much. So I'm uh, definitely excited to check this out. Let's go, man. Ah, Morocco. It's not a Latin country. You're thinking Maracas. It's in the Arab world, but it's not really Arab much. It's in Africa and not the Middle East, but it borders Spain literally like three times. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a fun one. <laughs> How close it is to Spain? Like, it's actually crazy, right? Because, like, I remember the first time when I was like, wait, what? Morocco's in Africa, but Morocco is this close to Spain? I was like, what? Spain's not close to Africa? You may have at least heard of the country Morocco. Literally blew my mind. images of Casablanca, the markets of Marrakesh, Couscous, and Fez hats. Although they did not originate here, but they totally made it popular. There's a lot going on and a lot of stuff to cover. So let's just find this place on the map first, shall we? For Morocco, they have their own interesting way of doing things, and you kind of have Love that the flag. West Coast Arab vibe. They're kind of like the California of the Arab world, I guess you could say. Oddly enough, they also kind of have the same size and population of California. Anyway, the country is located in the North oh. African region known as the Maghreb. It's straddles Maybe it's the California. Ocean to the west and the Maghreb. Yeah, look how close it is to Spain. <laughs> what the fuck? to the northeast with a narrow eight mile wide oh my God. border between them and the tip of Spain known as the Strait of Gibraltar. Even though Gibraltar and overseas territory of the UK is here, and the actual closest tip of Spain is here on the town and island of Tarifa. They are bordered by Algeria to the east, and we'll talk about these things in a sec. It's a tricky subject. The country is divided into Actually, bigger regions, than I thought, three though. Which are locked in areas with a confusing dispute. And the capital, Rabat, located along the West Atlantic coast. The largest city, Casablanca, is just a skip away, whereas the next largest cities are Fez, closer inland, while Tangier and Marrakesh have almost identical populations. I've heard of Casablanca. Oh, wait, it's the movie, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> ...and sometimes switch off for third place. Of course, the busiest airport is Casablanca's Mohammed V International. However, right. the next busiest are actually Marrakesh and Agadir, both incredibly popular destinations for business and tourism. Now let's get into the good stuff. You guys know how much I love territorial anomalies, and Morocco is loaded with them. First off, context! Morocco has gone through a lot of sovereignty switches. Historically, they were a French protectorate, and parts of it were colonized by the Spanish. The United Nations labels this area as the largest and most populous non-self-governing territory in the world. What? And in a nutshell, it kind of went like this. Okay, guys, I'm leaving. It seems like you guys are the ones that want this land the most, so I'll let you guys figure it out. Sweet. See ya. It's mine. Mine. No, it's mine. Who are you talking about? No, it's dude, mine. it's dude, just it's mine. It's mine. Basically, there was a war between all three sides. Mauritania oh, eventually shit. stepped down, but Morocco kept going. And to this day, about 80% of the land, starting at around the 27th parallel, including almost the entire coast and most of the resources, with a sizable offshore oil deposit, is de facto run by Morocco. Out of the half million residents in this area, only about a fifth live in the Polisario claimed areas, and about 40% right. alone live in the Moroccan-run city of Layune or El Ayoun. If you move inland, though, you reach the Sand Berm, a militarized wall in the middle of the sands that separates the SADR separatists from the rest of Morocco. What? Here you reach the last and probably most intense Moroccan outpost, Gergera, which sits right on the berm wall. And from there, the map literally says, no man's land, until you reach the very tip of the New Adibo Peninsula that we talked about in the Mauritania episode, and it has an abandoned town called La Guerra at the very tip. Oh, this is weird. Creepy. The coastal land that the Polisario Front has in their territorial claim. However, they don't really use it much because most most of their imports come in from why is the name no man's lander Mauritania or algeria their headquarters is located in the town of tindouf plus you know morocco is kind of keeping a very close eye on making sure that they don't try anything funny with access to the ocean if you want to visit western sahara though you can pretty much only enter from morocco and even then it might get closed off during times of tension whereas entrance right. to the polisario front claim territory is almost impossible to any outsiders to this day about 40 countries have diplomatic relations with the sadr no nation fully recognizes morocco's full sovereignty over the entire area. However, many do support the idea of Morocco annexing the area as an autonomous self-governing region under the Kingdom of Morocco. And if that wasn't enough, say hello to Spain's little <laughs> friends. If you go up north on the Mediterranean, Yay! you'll find the Plaza de Soberania. These are like the last and final remnants of the Spanish Empire in Northern Africa scattered along the coast. According to international law, the legality of these areas fall under Spain as scholars have been able to defend the claim that the modern state of Morocco was founded after these areas were already constitutionally part of Spain, even though Morocco was like, that's mine. Really? I mean, this button is literally attached to my shirt. It's still my button, though. The two largest entities being the cities of Ceuta, closer to Spain in the west, with a population of about 82,000, and Melilla, a little further east, with a population of about 80,000, and it has its own airport. In addition, you have the three Alucemas Islands, the three Chaparinas Islands, and finally, Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera, an incredibly small military outpost only connected by an 85-meter wide sand why do I feel like there's more information about Morocco 
than like other junk for now videos. I feel like, I feel like a little bit stunned back from like all this information entering my brain right now. The There's the a lot going on. Land border. In addition, two more islands fall under disputed. I think it was mainly because of like the um the the land split and you know what's happening with that situation. Territory. I think that's There's Isla Peregil, why it feels like there's so much going on. And Isla de Alboran. Otherwise, I asked Even you guys, he's out of breath. Yuck, peeps, to give us a list of some of the coolest notable sites of Morocco. Aye. Some of the stuff you guys mentioned were my Badi favorite Castle, part, the blue cool. city of Chefchaouen, Jardin Majorel, Mohammed V Mausoleum, the Hercules Cave, Ooh, even the This is why I'm talking. Bro, this is why I watch these videos. I like. I like him. Um, I'm a visual kind of guy. You know what I mean? So I like looking at beautiful things, the right? The Hercules. So these these countries, hey, I'm from the UK, so like it's not beautiful at all. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is a uh, god. Yeah, oh, this is beautiful. Cave, Ibn Danan Synagogue, so cool. the gates of Fez, and Fez disputedly has the largest car-free urban zone. These ruins of a Roman city, cool. the castle of Meknes, cool. this university, which is like the oldest in the world, Meronid tombs, and of course, Hassan II Mosque in Casablanca, the seventh largest mosque in the world, and it has the highest minaret in the world. And speaking of things that have height, Morocco that's has it. some amazing mountains, which brings us to... Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> That is so beautiful. Now people tend to think that northern Africa is all sand, but when you head I need west, to go traveling, you have more rocks in Morocco. Morocco. <laughs> Man, I haven't done a slap gig in a long time, <laughs> you, Hannah. First of all, the country lies right on the boundary where the African plate meets the Eurasian plate, with the Atlas thrust fault lines cutting through the country, just at the very northern tip at the Rift Mountains. This also creates the other three mountain chains, the Middle Atlas, the Anti-Atlas, and the High Atlas, where the tallest peak and tallest in North Africa can be found, Tubkal. Also, you can find the largest lake, the Bin El Widan Reservoir, and the source of the longest river, the Dra River, which flows all the way into the Atlantic. If you include Western cool. Sahara down south, you get more dry and empty vast desert land with a decent mineral deposit i still want to know why no man's land is called no man's land my, my, my guess is that nobody lives there right basically the coastal areas north of the mountains where the majority of the population lives are of course flatter and arable with more lush vegetation sometimes it even snows in the high altitudes morocco even has the largest ski resort in africa whereas hmm? everything south of that is pretty much dry rocky and hot all right and that's that now it's time for my triple shot of espresso break like i didn't expect a ski resort in, um, somebody say... in morocco Noah? Now, despite the arid terrain, Morocco wow. actually has quite a comfortable set of natural resources. About 18% of the land is arable and about 12% of the country is forested. The country also has a wide range of biodiversity. Many are endemic like gazelles, boars, and fennec foxes, over 90 species oh, of that beautiful. and monkeys. And yes, you may have seen the pictures of those tree-climbing goats. Huh? Yes, they do exist. They are found here as well. Wait, is that real? No fucking way. Wait, what am I seeing? This is legit. <laughs> Mostly in the town of Tamri. Unfortunately, due to illegal oh, animal fuck? trade and human intervention, much of the species are disappearing. And some, like the national symbol of Morocco, the barbed wow. lion, have gone extinct in the area. The last one was seen in 1922. Otherwise, Morocco has the fifth largest economy in Africa by GDP per person. Bro, what is going <laughs> jobs, mostly in mining, take the largest chunk of the workforce. I mean, they do hold about 75% of the world's known phosphorus mines. Nonetheless, they are still a heavily agrarian dependent nation as the sector employs about 40 percent of the populace it is said that morocco has the largest fish market in africa taking about three percent of their entire gdp and they are the largest exporter of sardines in the world finally little interesting side note holy shit it's illegal to smoke it they are the top exporter of legally grown cannabis in the world so wow of hashish. on average they produce about 70 percent of europe's imports speaking of resources food some top dishes you got wow Moro oh that is so good Morocco do a lot. There's a lot to Morocco, isn't there? I'm, 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 I'm actually very surprised. The Moroccan geography peeps mentioned include things like anything cooked in a tangine pot, rafisa, harira soup, pastilla, All right, let's go. mashui, and of course the national dish of couscous. Everyone knows this one. And sweets like these amazing things. And finally, you cannot go around Morocco without stumbling upon their favorite drink, mint tea. Oh, and Morocco is pretty much the only country that produces and exports argan oil. It is used in a variety of ways, sometimes in food, sometimes in cosmetics or hair products. It's pretty much the only thing that controls my hair. And speaking of things with hair, people, let's get to it, shall we? Uh, that was a good transition, wasn't it? People, because people have hair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. I mean, uh, you wrote it. Yeah. So, uh, 
and you said it good. In the Arab world, Morocco is kind of seen as like the strange cousin that got brought into the family by marriage. Most Moroccans probably wouldn't even identify as Arab. Let's explain. First of all, right. the country has about 36 million people and has the largest native Berber Amazigh community in all of Africa. It's hard to get exact estimates, but the censuses say that somewhere around 41 to 80% of the entire population has Berber Amazigh ancestry, whether it be full or partial, whereas 90% are non-Berber identifying Arabs. The remaining 1% are made up of other groups, mostly French and Spanish. Spanish, as well as West African immigrants. They use the Moroccan dirham as their currency, they use the type C and E plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. And on that note, what is Berber slash Amazigh? Now, we've talked about this in quite a few other videos before, but basically- I was just about to say, I was looking at that, and I, I, I was thinking, am I stupid for not knowing what that is? But we're in getting into it. In a nutshell, they are the native indigenous semi-nomadic peoples that have inhabited various regions of North Africa prior to Arab conquests. They have a completely different story and background from Arabs, they have their own traditions, customs, art, clothing, and language. Today, Berber slash Amazigh is an official language alongside Arabic in both Morocco and Algeria, and it can be written in both the Latin and neo tifinagh script, which looks the awesome. What? It looks like dancing people, and you can find it on street signs <laughs> all over. That being said, most metropolitan Moroccans are trilingual, growing up with both languages and a European wow. as a third, mostly French. To be fair, I know, uh, I know a Moroccan, and I think she can speak every goddamn language under the fucking sun i swear i i shit you not i shit you not they were a french protectorate at one point keith if i asked you to ask all the arabs around the world which country they probably think has the weirdest dialect which one do you think they'd say well considering i think this is the uh moroccan episode we're on right so i'm gonna go with moroccan yep is that all you need me for yeah i mean you just need more screen time because the subscribers love you all so. right well i'm gonna go awkwardly <laughs> dance in the back so i will i don't see why not moroccans speak arabic with a distinct dialect known as darija very hard to understand from a standard speaker and some say it could even be classified as its own language much of it is influenced off of berber Mazik. for example here's one of our subscribers from morocco explaining so hello i am ali from tangier morocco and i'm going to tell you the difference between arabic and moroccan dialect like I am going to that place near the market. In Arabic, it would be like uh, But in Moroccan dialect, it is something just like Wow. On another note, Morocco is also a monarchy, a kingdom ruled under Mohammed VI, claiming to be a direct descendant of the Islamic prophet Mohammed. He belongs to the Alawite dynasty, the second oldest ruling dynasty in the world after Japan's Yomato imperial family. The country's state religion is Islam. The vast majority at about 99% identify as adhering to the faith, mostly in the Sunni branch, and the remainder are mostly Christians and a small Jewish community. Speaking of which, Morocco used to have the largest Jewish population in the Arab world, some estimates claiming to be up to 350,000. After wow. the war times of the 20th century though, nearly all of them either fled or were expelled, most heading to Israel, and today Moroccan Jews make up the largest Jewish ethnic subgroup in Israel, and today less than 3,000. How come that happened? Does anyone know? And remain in Morocco. Culturally speaking, Moroccans have a very vibrant background, most of which being Berber Amazigh influenced. Keep in mind though, there are many different types of Berber Amazigh peoples and tribes. Some are light skinned, some are dark skinned, some have different customs, but overall, there are some universal traits that they all kind of share. You know what, Hannah? Come on in, just take this one. You know, why not? Cool. Okay. Prior to the spread of Islam, most Berber Amazi were traditionally animus that practiced things like ancestor veneration. Facial and body tattoos were common a long time ago amongst women with each image symbolizing something important. But the practice has been dying out since the 1940s, and today you can only find it mostly amongst the elderly. The national dress for both wow. men and women, a unisex scarf, is called jalaba, a long, loose, hooded garment which serves to keep the person warm but also protected from the sun. Moroccan architecture and literature is unique in itself wait warm in morocco my guess at morocco is really hot right or that looks sick bro wait is that like wait is that the fucking city from game of thrones the high wall dar structure is common to help ward off thieves and animals while minimizing heat metal oh my god styles and pottery are of course world renowned much of the traditional music incorporates a fusion of arab and berber slash ambazi undertones with a touch of french and maybe andalusian spanish Jeez, this list is getting pretty long. Ken, what else do we have to cover? Uh, let's see. There's the fortune teller thing, the hammam bath house, the riff independence thing, the weird dentist where you could find in the marketplace. Eh, we don't have time. Let's just save it for Fan Friday. Thank
Thank you, Hannah. I'll do the history part now. From Morocco's history in the quickest way I can condense it. The state of Carthage, independent Berber kingdoms, Roman Empire, Muslim conquests, Berber revolt, first Moroccan state under this dynasty. These dynasties come in which are responsible for Muslim Spain. Reconquista occurs. These dynasties. Finally, the Alawite dynasty, which is the current one. First Moroccan crisis, the Treaty of Fez, independence, Green March, Arab Spring. And here we are today. I asked you guys, the Moroccan geography peeps, for a list of some famous Moroccans, whether they are partial or fully Moroccan. Some people you mentioned were historical figures like Ibn Rushd or Alvaro S, Ibn Tashfin, Ibn Batuta, Princess Dia, Tariq Ibn Ziyad, contemporaries like Samira Saeed, Saad Lamjared, Badr Hari, Marian Shadid, Mehdi Banatia. Bro, are all these goddamn Moroccans fucking beautiful? What's going on here, mate? They're right here. They're all fucking stunning! Otman Benjaloun, God El Emale, Red One, French Montana, Edith Piaf. Yeah, she was part Moroccan. Technically, oh, kind of David Guetta, Hicham Gerouj. You and mean of technically, the kind of? Family. Whew, yeah, Morocco got like has quite a lot of interesting people and backstory. No wonder why they have such a unique set of friends. See what I did there? It's a transition into the. Perfect. Spawn. Now, Morocco's proximity to Europe and access to the Atlantic has always meant that they had way more exposure to the Western world than most of their cousins, which has played a crucial role in their diplomacy. For one, they were the first country in the world to recognize the USA as a country. Yeah, Morocco. During the revolution oh. time, Sultan Mohammed III in 1777 said any American merchant ship in his trade routes were under his protection. And in 1786, they signed the Moroccan-American Treaty of Friendship, which is actually the oldest friendship treaty in the USA. Oh, With shit. Spain, it's kind of like a love-hate relationship as they do great business and have history, but there's always the exclave thing. Saudi Arabia is like a close friend that typically supports and funds many projects and deals in Morocco. Morocco sent troops to help Saudi Arabia during the Gulf War, and the two kings get along pretty well. When it comes to their best friends, however, it's interesting because most Moroccans I have talked to have actually said France. Despite the past colonial issues, they've moved on, and France does the most business with Morocco. French is widely spoken. Both countries' peoples are always visiting or moving to each other. France has the All highest right. Moroccan population outside of Morocco, and today they work together. Oh, shit. In conclusion, Morocco is kind of like the uncle that married into the Arab family. It's probably one of the most beautiful places to visit in the Arab world, but maybe not the best place to learn what it truly means to be Arabic. It is beautiful, I can't lie. Really good video though, enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want next, and I'll see you all in the next video.